Welcome to the newest episode of Beaten and Bangin'. I'm your host, Kyle Dalton. Welcome to 2024, my new studio and a new show. Before we talk about what you can expect in 2024 on the channel, I want to first give props where they are due. As many of you know, the last few months have been extremely tough with the passing of my mom. My family has been incredibly supportive through it all, especially dealing with it all right in the middle of the holidays. Taking my mind off of it all, my youngest daughter Haley, who was in college, had some free time during Christmas break and offered to redesign my studio. I took her up on the offer. And here we are. I'm so grateful to her and her boyfriend Nick for all the painting, plus the assist they received from my other daughter, Ashley, who pitched in on painting the NASCAR stripes. I have to say, as a father, I'm incredibly blessed to have such amazing kids, including one who obviously has an eye for interior decorating. Thanks again to Hay, Nick, and Ashley for the new studio, including the cool Lego NASCAR I received as a gift for Christmas and we put together. I really hope you guys like the new design. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Now, about the channel. Not only will Beating and Banging have a new look in 2024, it will have a new, more expansive format. Starting this year, there will be more episodes each week, and they will be longer and packed with more news and information. They will include a variety of segments, including one on betting. I have to admit, I'm a complete novice when it comes to betting, so this should be fun learning about betting and seeing how good or bad I do on my picks. In addition, we'll have more guests on a regular basis. This includes drivers, pit crew members, and members of the media, as well as others within the NASCAR industry. I'm really excited about this because it's an opportunity to get to know who these people are. I think you'll be surprised and happy with some of the guests we'll be bringing on this year. In addition to more videos, we'll also make the shows available as a podcast. If you want to listen to them on your drive to or from work or wherever you might be, that will now be available to you. Also, as I mentioned in a recent video, we're going to have a weekly email newsletter that comes out at the end of each week that summarizes the week's events. It'll be a great source for you to catch up on what happened in the week in just a few minutes of reading. All right, enough about the channel. Let's get into some news. First, a couple of items from late last week that I want to talk about. Sadly, as you may have heard, SRX is going away. For me, it's sad news because I thought it was a fun format and presented a good racing alternative during the summer months. But to be honest, the recent news about IROC's return got my attention. I was really curious about it. Then, days later, SRX suspends operations. Is it connected? I don't know, but I really doubt it. The timing is just weird. According to the Sports Business Journal's Adam Stern, SRX costs had risen to an unsustainable level compared to incoming revenue, which led to the suspension decision. SRX officials hope to revive the series in some shape or form and are exploring their options. We'll see what happens, but it doesn't look good. Speaking of racing on TV, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet, but I definitely encourage you to go check out the trailer for the upcoming Netflix docuseries NASCAR Full Speed. One word describes it, intense. Marty Smith narrates the clip and the video captures the bad assery that is NASCAR with Smith talking about how drivers can get hurt or even killed. It's something I think all NASCAR fans know can happen, but sometimes lose sight of because of the sports safety record since the tragic death of Dale Earnhardt. I'm thinking this docuseries will capture the danger element, especially from the family side, and it will include a bunch of behind the scenes stuff with the drivers like Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Ross Chastain, Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Joey Logano, and Tyler Reddick. I'm really looking forward to it and its scheduled debut on January 30th. Now, on to our next story about Kyle Larson. No one will deny Larson's greatness. However, it's also hard to deny 
he sometimes makes questionable decisions and upsets other drivers. I've written about it over the last few years, like last season on the Bristol Dirt with Ryan Priest. The NASCAR season hasn't even started and Larson has already upset another driver. It happened this past week at the Wild West shootout at Vado Speedway when the NASCAR driver misjudged his move battling Tyler Stevens on the last lap of the fourth heat. The incident forced Larson to go to a backup car that would eventually win the 50 lap feature. Unfortunately, Stevens didn't have a backup car and wasn't happy about it. Here's what he had to say. Kyle's a better racer than that. And it's not like we're racing for second or the lead or even a transfer spot. We were both struggling racing for sixth in a heat race. And coming into turn three, coming to the checkered, he destroys me and tears his car up too. It doesn't make any sense from a racer's standpoint why he would do that. From sixth to seventh, it's one row in a B main. That's all it was. It's not like it was the end of the world, but instead he runs through me and my car is headed to the car wash in a million pieces. And we have to start from scratch tomorrow. We're a one car operation. Larson acknowledged Stephen's anger and admitted the move was all made out of frustration. Those remarks didn't help Stevens, who responded. I wish he had the decency to come over here and say, hey man, sorry, I didn't mean to get into you, but he won't. I used to have an amazing amount of respect for him, and I respect what he does in a race car 100%, but driving like that in those situations, there's no need for it. Interestingly, it sounds very similar to what Larson had to say last year about Denny Hamlin after Pocono. Oh, how the turn tables. Moving on to news from another champion, Martin Truex Jr. Actually, this news wasn't from the driver, but from his crew chief, James Small, during an appearance on Sirius XM NASCAR radio on Monday. Small talked about the number 19 team struggles at the end of the season in the playoffs and mentioned how there were multiple issues during the postseason, including the pit crew, where he mentioned how the crew was ranked fourth during the regular season but then dropped unbelievably to 28th at the end of the playoff run. But that wasn't the news. Small made a couple of other interesting remarks about changes to the number 19 team in 2024, including one loss due to a shuffle among TRD teams, and then mentioned a surprising lack of communication from the higher-ups at Joe Gibbs Racing. Take a listen. Yeah, we uh, our second engineer Nick he, he moved back to Colorado at the end of last year. You know he'd been out of, out here since uh, Finish Road closed down as well, and uh, he he went back there. So uh, we have Jake Helpaney. He's 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 a great addition to our team. So he'll be he'll be there on the engineering side with us, and uh, just a small change on the engine tuner side. You know we lost our longtime engine tuner Greg. Um, he's now up at LMC as part of the TRD reshuffle. So. Um, Aside from that, you know, everybody's the same. So uh, we'll see what happens on the pit crew side. Hopefully they tell me one day, but um, yeah. <laughs> it's not all that surprising that the move by Legacy might result in different personnel switching from JGR. But the last comment on the pit crew by Small, who is known for not sugarcoating what's on his mind, caught me off guard. We're just a few weeks away from the clash and JGR doesn't have its pit crew lineup set yet. I know in the last couple of years, I've written multiple stories about the various struggles JGR pit crews have experienced. Kyle Busch before he left, plus Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, and MTJ all have had multiple issues on pit road the last couple of years. It really feels like with the organization waiting this late to finalize its pit crew roster isn't a good sign. Listen, maybe they have the completed lineup and just haven't communicated it to Small. But that raises a whole other question. Why haven't they told him? It's an interesting situation at JGR, and one to keep an eye on in 2024, and see if there are more pit road problems organization-wide, as has been the case in the past. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. I want to get your thoughts on multiple items, including letting me know what you think about the new studio setup, are you as bummed as me about SRX going away? Are you as excited as I am about the upcoming Netflix docuseries? 
And what do you make of James Small's remarks about not knowing of any potential pit crew changes just weeks before the start of the season? I know with everything that's been going on with my family the last couple of months, I've not written a lot for Heavy.com, but that will be ramping up soon. Make sure to check out all of my stories there. And finally, be sure and sign up for our weekly newsletter at beatingandbanging.com to get the best recap of NASCAR news each week delivered right to your email. Thanks as always for checking out the latest video and have a great rest of your day.